very, very moved to be here, up here in this panel. I think I have um, worked and, uh, uh, and done many things with, I think, almost everybody on this panel. So that, that's really wonderful to be up here with you now. I do want to mention that um, as one of the organizers that we, re we really wanted to represent the amazing history of black anti-imperialist feminism. Um, many of the people that we reached out to to be part of the panel were very involved with the NWSA and so couldn't be present. Um, but I want to acknowledge that because um, that is a gap in this panel right now. And, but it's not one that we um, ignore. We, it's a very, very a critical part of the history of um, the Bay Area. So um, I wanted to talk about two uh, events that I was part of uh, that actually were here in the women's building. Um, so just for context, I was part of a, an organization, a revolutionary anti-imperialist organization called Prairie Fire Organizing Committee, which I see many faces from that uh, history here, and some of you may know about. But um, prior to uh, Women Against Imperialism forming, we felt like it was really critical to develop a political worldview that uh, was centered in women and women and imperialism, and try and understand the how women's liberation fit fit or shouldn't fit with imperialism. So I'm just holding up our pamphlet that we put together in 1977 which um, Freedom Archives, it's online and Freedom Archives, but which I was part of writing, so um, I fortunately still have a copy. Um, so, as, so that happened, and then, as, and then we tried to put that into practice in many different ways. So the event, the first event I wanted to mention was we hosted an event with um, Naomi Niwatiwa, who was at the time a leader in the Zimbabwean African National Union. And we hosted it here at the Women's Building shortly after the building opened in 1979. So Naomi had been part of a women's seminar that was held in Mozambique at the time. And it was a specific seminar that was to develop the, Zimba, the ZANU perspective on how women's liberation fit into the Zimbabwean national liberation struggle. And so she came and she reported on that seminar. And I did want to read a very brief quote from her just to explain, kind of give you a feel for what people, women around the world were doing in that period, which very often is just seen as a period of, um, in the United States, is identified as, you know, second wave feminism. But there were things happening all around the world. So Naomi said, what we did was do research into our own culture and see the oppressive nature of our own culture and how that was how that was influenced by the colonial imperialists when they came. And then we tried to eliminate those aspects of the impact of a colonialism and come up with some resolutions. And at the event, she explained all that in depth. And afterwards, we published this pamphlet, which was called Women's Liberation in the Zimbabwean Revolution. And that too is available on, Freedom Ar in, on the Freedom Archives website. So I think these are just important his historical examples of ways in which people were trying to make the connections. This was a point when su struggles in Southern Africa were like a priority for people, uh, for anti-imperialists around the world, and we as uh, feminist anti-imperialists were trying to make those connections real to us and as an intervention in the women's movement in this country which was really 
too much centered on the experience of white women and the U.S. experience via their eyes. So that was one thing that I wanted to share. The other was a more recent, fast forward to um, 1996, and um, the California Coalition for Women Prisoners had just been founded in the year before, in 1995, and we held the first International Women's Day event um, that we had on March, in March of 1996, and it was held here. And Angela Davis was the keynote speaker. And this was at a moment when, um, of time when people were not very active around the issue of imprisonment and the issue of abolitionism had not really been even thought of by, or ha hadn't been developed by Angela, which was to come. But that was a really an amazing event where the lines were all around the block for to come in. And this space um, where it's lovely to see so many people now, but it was really overflowing with people at that, for that event. And at that event, um, Angela and some of the founders of CCWP on the outside, which included formerly incarcerated women, were able to share how they saw the importance of women in prison as a, as a part of political movement. I don't think it was called anti-imperialism per se, but it clearly was making the connection between what the prison industrial complex, how it was repressing women of color particularly black and brown women, and how that was part of imperialism's game plan for um, suppression in this society. So that was a really an important event in terms of uh, laying the foundation for a lot of the work that CCWP has taken on, and we are moving into our 25th anniversary year uh, coming in 2020, so that's something for you all to look forward to. But um, meanwhile, we do currently have a project called Firestorm, which is an effort to revive or, uh, or, or recreate or create in this particular era um, an understanding of how women's imprisonment in the U.S. Uh, fits into a global carceral regime that represses women and other people all around the, the world and is really a very key component of imperialist uh, strategies for control and white supremacy. So um, I will just plug, we have people in the back. If you're interested in getting more information about Firestorm, please sign our email list later and uh, pick up some information. And thank you all very much. Yeah.